I want to talk about a concept that uh, you guys hear me talk about all the time. So I was like, oh, wow, like I probably should actually talk about this concept and like why it's important. So it's the concept of the total duration of a move. So what is the total duration? It's the total duration of the move from the start to the finish of the move. So from the first frame to the last frame. So this requires you knowing frame data. So you either need a resource like dust loop, plus you need to understand the idea of frame data. So if you don't know uh, this game and basically all fighting games run at like 60 frames per second, the way that a move is breaking down is between the startup frames, so that's the beginning of the move, the active frames, which is when the move is actually happening, and the recovery frames, which is when the move is ending. If you have a move like like this, so when I press the button, so these are like a million as in startup, and then this is during the active frames, and then this is the recovery frames visually but you can uh, either record video at 60 frames per second or you can go look at the data on the sleep wiki and you can see like the different startups active frames and recoveries of move but for the most part the raw numbers themselves don't really mean so much right unless someone defines them for you for example what defines like a fast startup move in my opinion it will be anything that's like technically anything that like an opponent can't see would be fast startup long active frames that one is pretty easy to define it's a move that stands out for a long time long recovery is a move that you're stuck there for a long time when it whiffs right a good example of a move with a pretty long recovery would be like far slash so it has a lot of active frames not a lot of recovery actually if i had to think of a move that has a lot of recovery it'd be like this has a decent amount of recovery on it. These three three things together, what is called total duration. Why does the total duration of moves matter? So for example, like it's pretty obvious why the speed of a move matters, right? So let's say you're, you're playing uh, Milia and you have like an overhead or a low that you're trying to do, or even like a, let's say a, a left, right that you're trying to do. The startup of the action that you're using for the mix up is gonna be important because you're gonna want it to hit at the same time. You're going to want it to preferably be at a speed that people can't see so that it's a strong mix up that you can enforce on your opponent. That makes sense. Why do active frames make sense? Active frames help for a lot of things. For example, a really common one is against reversal throw. So in this game, throws are two frame startup, unlike old Guilty Gear, it's one frame startup. So if you use a move that has low active frames, like Milius 2K has low active frames, it can be hard to time a move to beat this throw. But if I use something with way more active frames, let's say 5H or close slash, it is very easy to hit meaty throw. This is why you'll see people pick the normals that they use to hit throw because they want to use something with a lot of active frames uh, because they know that if they use something that's active, they cannot be thrown. Another good way uh, to use it would be backdash. It's one of the reasons why I have Geo. Geo has uh, this move. You cannot backdash this move. It's very, very hard to backdash away from this move. Very, 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 very hard. As opposed to something like this, which while still really good, since it's not super active, easier to backdash. Make your block, see? Recovery, again, pretty straightforward, right? Uh, moves that have low recovery, you can throw them out and it's less risky to throw them out because they recover fast. You go back to neutral fast. As opposed to moves like this with a lot of recovery where while they might have a long range or a lot of active frames, if you whiff, your opponent can do something about it because they can see it and run over. So putting all these things together helps you begin to understand the concept of total duration. So you can use this from a neutral perspective, you can use it from an offense perspective, and you can use it from a defense uh, perspective. And I'll give an example of all three. So for neutral, I'm kind of gonna be repeating myself here, but the lower the total duration of an action, the harder it is for the opponent to see, physically see that action. So for example, we'll do one with Milia and one with Geo. So Milia, because Milia has uh, several things that she could do at mid range that are quite fast, that are low total duration. Example, her back step is low total duration. It's 16, basically instant total duration, right? It's 16. Her far slash is 10 frame startup. So it's, it's pretty hard to see. You can whip punish this to be fair. It's not, it's a decently long total duration, but combined with this, her 5K, which is her 5K and her 2K, both two really common approaches that uh, I believe 2K is like 19 and uh, 5K is like 21 or 22 frames total duration. Her run is very fast. She has this dash FD to confirm the situation. 
and her IDJH, which is 21, 22 frames. Combine that with neutral jump to see what the opponent does and waiting to see what the opponent does. And it's really hard to see what Milia is going to do in a neutral space if you pick moves the right way. She has moves that are very committal, like S-Disc, for example, that is very fast, but has a ton of recovery. So if the opponent is not doing anything, they can get over it and hit you and things like that. If you mix it up in a good way, it becomes hard for the opponent to know what you're going to do because you're, you're playing on that line of, can I actually see what they're going to do all the time? On the other hand, we have Geo. So Geo, she has an issue where her dash, you can cancel it really quickly. I believe it's nine frames. And she has things like her 5K, which is very fast and this is it basically you cannot see this and her forest slash which if she does with this and uh, a lot of people when new giovanna players ask for advice the first thing they usually hear is don't use far slash too much while it's a very 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 active move it has a lot of total duration right like the startup is fast it has a lot of active frames which is beneficial for its usage but it makes it easier for the opponent to see and then there's the recovery at the end of that so if someone is waiting or even like neutral jumping or something it's an easy 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 snipe this is why you see geos use a lot of other moves sometimes like they'll mix this with this ideally one is going to be dash button like this is your general approach this is to mostly to catch back dashes and then she has the safe 2d while you're playing outside of range because this is disjointed. So now let's go to pressure. And again, I'll use uh, both Giovanna and Milia. We'll start on the Geo side because though Geo, when you're starting, she has like close slash frame traps that people like to use that work, you know, in the tower going up to the 10th floor. But once you get to a certain point, like let's say you're a Giovanna player challenging Celestial, you'll notice that like your normal traps to hit normal people won't work so well. And the main reason is like, while this move's really good and it's plus, you're committing to her string really hard and you're not playing with your opponent's reaction. Giovanna is pretty good at doing this because just like a neutral, she can use these in pressure. And 5K is a really good example. So her 5K is minus two, very short total duration, ton of options. Jump cancel, special cancel, normal cancel into sweep for high return, and 6P to crush throw. And if you think the opponent's gonna respect, you can repeat it. And even on a faultless defense, she can still grab you. She has a bunch of moves like her 5K, like her 2P, like her 5P, where she can play in that, ah, uh, this is close to instant speed, what are you gonna do type things to help condition and enable other options. So Milia, you also get to take advantage of this. So generally, it's considered to not have good pressure, but she gets to take advantage of this idea as well. And the way I would uh, give it to you would be around her delay 5K. So she can delay it into itself, which enables her to dash. And of course, dash pretty fast. So a combination of 5, 5K delay 5K, 5K IAD, which is fast as we remember, 5K dash 5K, and dash 5K 2K plus 5K into throw is a really solid option set to make it difficult for the opponent to deal with your throw pressure uh, off this. Again, you're kind of playing in that line of, oh, the total duration of this moves really fast. So by the time you see what's happening, I already made my choice. So you have to make your choice really fast too. This is a really important idea, not just in these examples, but in Guilty Gear in general. 